walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. Cause I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. Cause I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. Cause I know who I am. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracles. I live a life of favor. Cause I know who I am. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Somebody make some noise in the house of the Lord. Somebody say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm walking in power. I'm walking in miracle. I live a life of favor. Hallelujah. I know who I am. So again, I bring greetings to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, this is our Sunday service, Davide Tabernacle, Church of the Lord Jesus Christ of the Apostolic Faith. And we welcome you, those who are looking online, those who are at their home. We greet you in Jesus' name. There is one God, Amen. one Savior, Hallelujah. one Redeemer. Hallelujah. And his name is Jesus. Jesus. As you remain standing, uh, reading from the Word of God, from Ezekiel, Ezekiel in the Old Testament, and then I'm going to take you to Galatians chapter 3 in the New Testament. But Galatians is more my main topic. I'm just reading Ezekiel so you can get the gist of what I'm going to preach on today. The word of the Lord reads like this. The word of the Lord came unto me again saying, What mean ye that you use this proverb Concerning the land of Israel, saying, The father, fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. Praise the name of the Lord. And then I'll take you lower down to Galatians chapter 3, and I'll get to it while you take your seats in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I just want to talk about cycles cycles today praise the name of our Lord you know we are born into this world all those who were born into the world say amen, amen. all those who were dropped into the world <laughs> don't say anything <laughs> we often joke and say people have a drop day because some of them act like if they were already dropped into the world. You know, when we talk about cycles, I want to address today negative or the negative cycles in our lives. So as you pay attention, it wouldn't be long, negative cycles. We are born and we came into the world and we take on all the DNA of our parents, young people, all the DNA of the father and mother put together to create this child that looks just like you, pretty or handsome, just like you. Well, you can answer that when you go home if I am speaking the truth. But when you create or that baby is born, you look at that baby and you say, wow, mommy, best looking child. As a local thing here in Trinidad, we have the man they call Brigo, and he says he's mommy's best looking child. Amen. Only Trinidadians will understand that. But nonetheless, we take on all the traits, all the personalities, all that we, when we are born into this world, we take that on from uh, our parents, our siblings, people around us. So I'm just not, I'm going to talk on the negative things that we take on. 
their DNA is passed on. Our traits are passed on. Can I just say that no child is born a racist? Okay, put your hands for that. No child is born a racist. They learn that. And a lot of the stuff that we do, we learn from our parents or grandparents. That's why I say to people that are going to get married, I say to them that you are not marrying the young lady or the young man alone. You are marrying the family. You are marrying the village. You are marrying the school. You are marrying everything that helps bring them up to where they are. Down to the cow pen and all. Bless the Lord. So when you are born, you take on some, uh, 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 some traits that are physical. If your father was a short man, you might as well end up being a short person. If you're six foot something, then you will take on that, that trait or that DNA, that, pers- that, that, that what you inherit, become a basketballer or something. So where I'm getting at, just as we take on personalities and, and all that they give us from their DNA, there's a spiritual side of that that we also possess. And that spiritual side is all the emotions and all the, the, the thing that we inherit, how to act, how to behave, what, how we think, how we, what, what processes, what processes we, we look at things, how we adapt. That you'll find sometimes that all the argument and the fighting and the bickering in a marriage, the child will eventually take on that. You might be fighting and cussing out each other, and you'll tell the child, don't cuss. They may not curse or cuss in front of you, but believe it or not, when they are among their peers or somebody, they would use obscene language. Because they are learning that, not only physically, emotionally. Are you with me still? So we have some traits we take on. And then you would realize, and you look back, you would realize, you will see that my, I am divorced because mommy and daddy is divorced. And when you look at the grandparents, they were divorced. Or you would look at poverty and you would see that the grandparents probably was in poverty. Your parents were in poverty. And now you are facing poverty. And that spiritual thing that is there is resting and remaining in the family in generation. Are you still with me? Yeah. So the courts came up with something. I wouldn't go into all the details. That when young men that grew up with single mothers, they came up with this thing that they say because they were at a disadvantage, not having a father in the home, that's why they committing crime. Hello? The courts will say because of a certain area, be it the beach of the lavender, certain disadvantage area, that's what you learn, and we have to be lenient with you because you were, your life was only open to crime, thieving, and, uh, and all the, the, that the list adds. Hallelujah. So, not only do we take on our physical things from our parents and our fathers, we take on that spiritual also from them. Somebody say amen. amen. So you'll find now that probably when you look and trace your life, that there was problems in the marriage. And when you look and you trace now, you'd want to know who is so unfaithful that this one have to become unfaithful or who was the abuser. And when you look now, you see that your father was an abuser and your grandfather was an abuser. He learned that from his father. And now you learn the same thing. And now you are abusing your wife. Same thing with unfaithfulness. And you learn that because I'm getting to a point in a while 
So we have the habit of saying, that's who I am. Anybody ever had that privilege of meeting somebody? I know David Tabernacle, you're all holy and nice and saved by the grace of God and on your way to heaven. But you ever meet somebody and they have some wicked and nasty ways and when you try to impart some knowledge or some wisdom, they tell you, that's our born, that's who I am, and that's how I go dead. Have you ever come across anybody like that? There was a big word to that, they inculcate all the ways of their surrounding, their family. So, Ezekiel, God is speaking to him, and he's saying that you are saying, there's a proverb, there's a saying that our fathers eat sour grapes. That's why the children teeth is on edge. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's get it. Ezekiel chapter, what did I just read? 18? Chapter 18. I'll just read it from the word of God. It's nothing from Pastor Mikey, but from the word of God. The word of the Lord came unto me saying, What mean ye that ye use this proverb concerning the land of Israel? Hear what it's saying. The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. As I live, say the Lord, the Lord God, you shall not have occasion anymore to use this proverb in Israel. You say, you don't have to use it. As, uh, behold, all souls are mine. Follow it in your Bible. He says, all souls are mine. As the soul of the Father, so also is the soul of the Son, is mine. The soul that sinned, it, it shall die. So what the Lord is saying here, you're not, not because your father did this, that means you have to do it. You cannot look at your generation past and say, because I was brought up in poverty, that I have to remain poor. The Lord is saying, every soul on this earth is his own. And in other words, what he's really saying that you are responsible for your actions. Bless the Lord. You are responsible. So no longer do I have to wonder, well, my father did this, that's why I am in this. Unless your father held a gun to your head or put something and said, do that, you still have free will. Hallelujah. And free will, if we don't decide to change our mind, not even God can change our mind. Think about that. Because if God gets in and changes our mind without we wanting that, he would not be God. Because when he put, let's go back to Genesis. Can I get something? Let's go back to Genesis. Genesis tells us that Adam and Eve was placed in the garden. Amen? Amen. They were placed in the garden. And Adam or Eve took the fruit and ate of it and sinned against God. Rebellion. Yeah. Are you still with me? Yeah. Adam, who should have known better, should have said, Hear what? Eve, I love you too bad, but you see that? That is wrong in the eyes of God. Yeah. And I cannot do it. Because God has said to us, the day we eat, we go surely die. Yeah. However, in marriage today, can I just throw this one for free? Any woman or man that comes in a marriage and they want to be God or supersede God, then something is wrong or all the love that you have for that person, when it comes to their being God or in front of God, then you need to check yourself. Because somebody will say, girl, I love you too bad, and I, if you're going to hell, I will spend hell with you. I will go in hell for you. 
Don't worry, I love you too bad. I go take the mark of the beast when the, when the Antichrist comes. And don't worry, I go go hell and you, you go, I go save all you. That is against everything we believe in God. Because when it comes to salvation, when it comes to the Lord, the Lord is saying every soul is mine and everybody have to answer but itself. That was that one amen there. Everybody have the answer for themselves. So when you stand before God, you can't say, well, the wife didn't want to come to church. Well, the husband didn't want to come to church. Or, well, they didn't want to get baptized. Or they didn't want to serve God. So, so what do you want me to do? No, no, no. He will say, what have you done? And why did you not accept the plan of salvation, the love of God? You can't talk for nobody else. And nobody can talk for you. That was a clapping moment. It's every soul. So don't blame it and say because people might say, well, single parents and this, and that's why people are becoming uh, gay and they're choosing that lifestyle because they grow up among women and so And all these sets of things. That's physical. But the spiritual part, I'm going to get into. So Adam messed up. And the cycle of sin continued. The cycle continued. Achan, when Jericho, um, Joshua went to war, they won the battle and God tell him, hear yeah, what? These idols, these silver and gold idols, do bring it back to Israel. Leave it there. Achan decide, well, I fight. I go get some. Nobody go know nothing. So he went in his tent and he covered it in his house underneath. And when they went back to fight, they lost the battle. There was a great uh, slaughter. And Joshua goes back to God. And he said, what is going on? And he said, check. There is sin in the camp. Hallelujah. Sin has a way of, 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 of attracting and, and affecting those around. My God. I'll get to that. So, so Achan... The Bible says he and his family, they, were, they died because of what they buried in the camp. Let me tell you something. The minute, I'm trying to get to this point that every soul is, 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 is of God and you have to answer for yourself. Achan and his family, they died because what the Bible is really saying is that the family should have said something or said joshua this is not right in the eyes of god the lord god commanded us this should not be there and here it is my father bury a hole put dig a hole and bury these um idols in it and now the the israel the army is losing the battle the bible says that the entire family was killed let's go to the new testament ananias and zephara they, they said, decided that uh, we go build, we go build, um, sell the land and we go bless the church and the money go go towards the church and so on. Now they, they might have said, okay, well, we go sell the land for 100,000 and somebody give them 400,000 and they find that's plenty boy to give the church. But they said to Peter, we go sell the land and all the proceeds will go to the benefit of the kingdom. And then Ananias decided, okay, why we hear what? We go tell Peter... We go lie. That, um, all right, we go deviate from the truth. We go really lie. We go deviate from the truth. We go tell Peter that we sell it for such and such, and this is all. And then I asked, came in. He said, um, Peter said, that's all, because the Holy Spirit already speaking to Peter. And he said, yeah, that's what we sell it for. This is the proceeds. He said, why have you let Satan enter into your mind? That you're lying. And the Holy Spirit strike him dead. Hallelujah. Amen. His wife came in after and he said, did you not, um, what you sell it for? She said, Sir. he said, why, why, just as, why are you lying against the Holy Spirit? He said, just as these men that took your husband out to bury him, they will, took you, they will take you out. And the Bible says that she fell down dead. Because although they are husband and wife, she had a mind of her own. He had a mind of his own. Somebody needed to tap somebody on the back and say, this ain't right. 
And we are living in a society. We are living in a place, as I said last week, everybody feeling is right there on edge. You can't talk truth. You can't say this. Everybody, everybody's offended. If I say, oh my God, there is something on Facebook that the commission is a, is a, is a, a comedy video, but he was apologizing for, for everything. And every slang he used, he had to apologize to the deaf, he had to apologize for the blind, he had to apologize to the animal, he had to apologize to this, he had to apologize to this association, and the, because everybody walking wrong and their feeling is on edge, and the minute you say something, they feel offended. Somebody needs to stand up and speak the truth in love. That was a clapping amen. A capping moment and a, a amen moment. Somebody need to tell the world that we live in, that, that we are going down a road of destruction. Somebody needs to stand up and say, hey, this what is happening is wrong and we need to attack this. We need to pray against it. We need to stand up for what is right. So the cycle of sin continued. Let's go to Galatians. Teaching here today, chapter 3. Chapter 3, verse 10. For as many are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, curse is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith, but the man that do them shall live in them. Pause there for a while and explain what is going on here. The apostle when man fail in the garden, God gave them the law. Come on, children. God gave them the law. The law was perfect. And man being imperfect, he could not keep the perfected law. The law was this to the human race or to the individual. You get up in the morning... You're here in a mess. You rample, dribble all over your face. And you go to the mirror. You look into the mirror. The mirror tells you that your hair is a mess. Yamp in your eye. Dribble running down. I'm not preaching to anybody here. And you're in a mess. But the mirror can only show you that you're in a mess. But the mirror does not get up, take a comb, and comb your hair. The mirror does not take you, carry in the bathroom, and bathe you. The mirror does not put clothes on you. The, what? The, 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 the mirror is the law that showed us our faults. The mirror is the law that showed us our sin against God. The mirror was the things that, that you know, when it came before God, all it, done, it did, all the sacrifices, everything that was done in the Old Testament, it pacified God. But it could not satisfy God. Are you still with me? It showed us who we are and what we are. A wicked and wretched generation. A generation that was doomed for hell. They tried. The law was there. They couldn't keep it. They just couldn't keep all that was written. So Paul is in talking to the church that is going through some problems here. In Galatia. And he's telling the Galatians and encouraging them. Don't get mixed up. I'm going to come in here now. Don't get mixed up. Let's go to the, to the verse now that I want to get to. It says here, verse 13 of Galatians chapter 3. Christ 
had redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Holy Spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the man of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet if it be confirmed, no man this knowledge or add it thereunto. Hear what? What the writer is saying, the law was there to show up our sin, to show up our mess, to identify what we were and what we are. But he said that when Christ, that Good Friday, went on the cross of Calvary and died for our sins, my God, and rose again, he took, my God, the authority that Satan had over us. He took the authority that Satan had over us because when we sin in the garden, the devil had authority. But he took that away and he says, anyone that comes to me, you are redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. You are set free that you can fulfill the law. All right, let me just tell you this. Satan, he took the authority of Satan, but he did not take the power of Satan. The Bible says that when Jesus died, he went into the grave and he took the keys of hell, death, and the grave from the devil. It says, no longer do you have authority over these people. Once they come to me, now they're renouncing you as their leader and they're putting back God in position where he belongs. Amen. Are you still with me? Yeah. So, it says, Satan has power that was not taken away because there is something in the heavenlies that is taking place over every human mind. Just as God is fighting to keep you and to save you and redeem you, just so Satan is trying to steal, kill, and destroy your life from this earth. There's a fight in the heavenlies. The power of Satan is there. But we have overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. So Satan has power, but he does not have authority over anybody's life. My God. So how this happens? The law was showing up everything that we were, that we are. But when Jesus died... And ascended up or ascended on high. He sent the Spirit of God. And he says, whoever have the Spirit of God, they are free. Whoever in Galatians chapter 5, let me just read this here. Galatians chapter 5. Ah, uh, boy. Let's get it here. Hear this from verse 19. Or verse 18. Let's take it from verse 18. He says, but if you are led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. If you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, Witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. It goes on here to say, envying, murder, drunkenness, reveling, and such like. Of that which I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But he says, if you... In verse 25, if you walk, if you live in the Spirit, let us walk after the Spirit. So what I'm getting at, as I said on numerous occasions, that the law 
showed us our sins. But the law could not redeem our sins. It showed us, it told us that if you do, you shall die. But grace says, do and live. Oh my God. He says, if you, 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 fail, you fall here, you do this, you do that, you shall re, re, um, re, you can get the recompense which you shall die. But when Jesus Christ came, he says, come unto me, all you are labor and heavy laden with sin, and I will give you rest. Come, learn of me. My yoke is easy. My burdens are light. Amen. That's the love of God. So, so what Satan, in all that he does, has one way to attack the human being. People will say, well, Satan has power. Yes, he has. Well, Satan, the devil make me do that. You ever hear that saying? The devil make me lie. The devil make me steal. The devil make me do that. No, 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 no. The devil will set up everything around you and tempt you by coming in into your mind. That's the only plan or the only way the devil can get to you. He can get into your mind. And start speaking lies and encouragement and temptation. And you now who are an individual have to answer for yourself. You can either say yes or no. Because the Bible says there's a war between the flesh and the spirit. The spirit wants you to do good. The flesh wants adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, all the niceness, niceness. But there's a war. The Bible says... He didn't say that you should. He says if you walk in the flesh, you could do this will happen. But if you walk in the spirit, this will happen. But the Bible never tells you, well, we should just take away the flesh and, 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 and the minute the flesh, the, the flesh ceases to exist, is because we are dead. We have to live with it. Just as the pandemic and people are telling you, well, it's a new normal and we have to live with it. Well, we have to live with it. The flesh and the desires of the mind is to go after the things that are not of God. Amen. Lying, stealing, and all the lists that are, are lists here. The devil sets up temptation. But if we yield to the temptation, if we succumb to the temptation, then we are guilty. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody will say, well, pass." If I am not under the law and I'm under grace, then I could do whatever I want. It doesn't work so. Because the Bible says, walk in the spirit. In other words, when the law said, okay, well, if you did that, you shall surely die. Because God is a God of generations. And whatever happened in just this generation, he comes up in the other generation and he's watching and he's looking. And if that generation fail, my God, he's looking now for this generation to make a change. And somehow this generation will do just as a generation gone by. Because nobody in the time past in Israel, in the Old Testament, my God, the, the all that they were given is do and die, or do or die, sorry. But when Jesus comes, he gave us everlasting life. When we were born into this world, my God, we look at our children and we say, Mama, Popo, good Lord, yeah, boy. And the thing is about it, when we make our children and they are born into this world, they are we, as the Bible says, it's appointed unto a man once to die. So between birth and the time that they die is what we call time. And we are given that time to make responsible choices that we have to answer to God. We are given this time on this earth to live a life pleasing to God. And yet for all, we mess up, we sin up, we throw it away. Day after day. But what I love, the Bible did not leave, leave us hanging. They say, well, what are we going to do? The Bible says, if you live in the Spirit, you shall walk in the Spirit. Hear what the Spirit does. Now that I'm glad that you asked, 
The Spirit fulfills the law by telling us uh, when we spend time with God in the spirit realm, when we talk to God, my God, it gives us uh, the power and the authority to overcome the enemy, which is the devil. So when we are tempted to lie or, or adultery or fornicate and all that is going in there and you're questioning, whoa, should I do this? Should I? The Spirit of God, when we go to God and say, God, give me the strength, He will empower us to say the things I used to do, I will do them no more. The places I used to go, I will go them no more. So you're making conscious decision. To benefit your everlasting life. That's why it's important to keep communicating with the Spirit of God, not on a daily basis, but probably on a minutely or hourly because we as Christians, we get up in the morning and we say, Lord, bless me, keep me. Lord, sanctify. Lord, make a way. Lord, do this and do that. And then we go about our day and then we forget what we prayed about. But when we are tempted, when we are tempted to do wrong, the Spirit of God that is in us, He will say, hey, hey, come on, come on, you could do better than that. Come on, you are saved by the grace of God. You are redeemed by the blood of Jesus. You are a child of God. You are walking in the light. You are living by faith. So He says, fulfill the law. That when the law says, you're not supposed to do that, and you're not supposed to do this, and you're not supposed to do that. And when you are tempted to do what the law says that you should not do, the Spirit of God gives you the strength, the power, and the authority to overcome the devil. We are overcomers, or we have overcome by the blood of the Lamb. Bless the Lord, somebody. So I don't want to leave any questions in the air. To say, well, pastors, I could do this and I could do that. We are answerable once we come in to the plan of salvation. Once we come in to God. Hallelujah. Well, somebody goes to say, well, pastor, since the grace of God is there, I can do whatever I want and God will forgive me. Sister Maria, you answered that so well some years ago. Yes, he will forgive you. But there's reper repercussions of what you do. And sometimes, or most times, in the heavenlies, while the devil is here, is saying, yes, he did that. He should be punished. The, Jesus stands up. The Bible says in Galatians that there's a mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus, who stands up as a lawyer and says, remember my blood. Remember my death on Calvary's cross. Remember what I did. And I paid the price. For the, I paid the price. I pay the price so they can live. You know, laws are there for a reason. They keep us in check. On the highway, 100 kilometers. If you pass it by one, you can get a ticket, right? Nobody stops you and give you a recommendation for driving under. It is the law of condemnation. That's why we have courts. That's why we have magistrates. That's why we have some lawyers who are taking people money. Because all the Lord does is condemn. That's what I'm really trying to tell you. All the Lord does is you look at yourself and you, you see you are a wretched, wicked person. You are a sinner. You are, you are lost. But then grace comes in and grace tells you once you come just as you are. The problem is society. Everybody trying to fix and clean and self-clean and check themselves. And you're all well and good, but you can't save yourself. The Bible says in Jeremiah that the heart of man is deceitful and desperately wicked above all things. Who can know the heart of man but God? But God. 
And Jeremiah was singing that thousands of years ago. And Jesus came and he said, come, 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 just as you are. We have an honor. We have a privilege. We have the love of God abiding in us. We have the spirit of God. Hallelujah. You see, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the apostle Paul said, you can't have fellowship with, at the table of demons and you can't have fellowship at the same time at the table of the Lord. Do you know when we choose to do, uh, um, somebody said you could do bad all by yourself. Who is that, Medea? You can do bad all by myself. Do you know that when we choose to sin against God or to do wrong, we are, not, we are attracting a whole army of demonic spirits that is going to come in. That is going to come in. Sin is like dog filth. Sin is like when a dog do something on the roadway or in a garage. I ain't want to even talk about the cats. That if you go too close, you will smell it. And if you smell it and you don't see it, you're going to mash it. And wherever sin is or that dog messes, you will see a lot of flies. What happened? One fly would come in and rest and then whistle and call the rest. And that is how sin is. You, you're too close to it. It affects you. It may smell. You might be there. You might be saying, oh, yes, I, I would just take a little, a, a little dip, a, a little foot in. And it catches you. What's sweet? In Trinidad, we say, what's sweet? In goat's mouth. Sour. In the behind. Calypsonian said that. So I want to encourage you. I want to really tell you today. It's not a message to make you jump and dance and, and born and scream. It's a message for us in this time to check ourselves and walk by in the spirit. Walk in the spirit. You see, walking in the spirit is not taking one step. Check this out. Walking in the Spirit is not taking one step and it says you have walked. Walking in the Spirit is a continual movement in the Spirit. The writer says walk in the Spirit, foot after foot, step after step. What it means, keep the relationship going, keep the prayer going, keep the fasting going, keep sub subduing the flesh that you would overcome and you will live in the Spirit. Much of our problems today that we face is because we are walking in the flesh and not in the Spirit. And that's a fact. You were hurt and the hurt came in and you're hurting and then hurt whistled his partner jealousy and vexation and murder and strife and he whistles the others and they're coming in one by one and two by two and they are resting here and what you were dealing with that person that hurt you. No, you, you murder and envy and jealousy and the list that is, goes on. That all that is harboring in your mind. But when you come to Jesus, sets you free. For whom the Son set free is free indeed. That's why Paul was saying to the Galatians, walk in the Spirit. That you will not fulfill the loss of the flesh. We have a tendency as I end here. To say once we come to Jesus. That's it. I'm baptized in his name. That's it. But this is a daily thing. When you come to him. Because the old habits just don't disappear. 
The old cousin, just don't disappear. The old, the old creature, just don't, the flesh don't walk away and say, that's it, I give up. It's there with us. And you know what is the nice thing? We know when we grow in, in Christ in the spirit, because when the person really aggravates you and you really want to let them know how you feel, you humble yourself and you say, God, give me the strength. Give me the strength. Give me the strength. Because you know if I handle it. That's how you know you're growing. So as I end today, walk, walk, step after step, Day after day, minute after minute, hour after hour, keep speaking to your God. Keep telling Him about your problem. Keep telling Him, Lord, I need you. I need you. I need thee every hour. Lord, I need thee. Because without Him, we're going down to hell. It's plain as that. But without Him, I love the song that my father used to sing. I have a home prepared where the saints abide just over in the glory land. And I long to be by my Savior's side just over in the glory land. That's a destination we don't want to miss. Don't let the devil have the better say. Don't let the devil tempt you. Or let me put it over properly. The devil will always tempt you. He will always tempt you. Don't all pray to the temptation. You say to your God and to yourself, Spirit of God, Spirit of the living God, Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, that dwells in me, quicken my mortal body. Lord, give me the strength. Lord, give me the power. Lord, give me the authority. I am an overcomer. I am a conqueror. I am more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. So much more to share, but I'll stop right now in Jesus' name. And for those who are listening online, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, today is a good day to accept Him. And if you find yourself bound in sin, you can ask the Holy Spirit to come in and set you free, and He will do that. And keep calling on him keep talking to him and live by the word of god and set you free in jesus name thank you for listening for all those who are here those online until another time another sunday god bless you in jesus name god bless you hallelujah let's clap our hands for the lord